Hey, what's up, guys? Michael here from Polygon Island, and a tutorial. Wow, I know it's been a while, but today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this uh, really cool uh, kind of pixelated water animation. Uh, it's pretty cool to get you introduced uh, with like fluid sims and stuff, and I think it looks really cool. Uh, so let's get started. So first we need what's called a domain and what this basically does is it tells Blender where the water is supposed to stay in and where it's not allowed to leave. So usually this is in the form of a cube but it can also be in like any mesh but I'm going to use a cube. So first we're going to get our camera settings because I like doing that first. Um, for my animation I put mine, my camera, in orthographic mode by going to this little camera thing and going orthographic. Uh, I then zoomed it out just a little bit and then I kind of made the cube, which is going to be our domain, it's sort of a rectangle type of thing, but I wanted it to be fairly large, um, so yeah, maybe like that would be good. Uh, then I'm going to put a plane under our domain, where it's touching the bottom, kind of like that, uh, so the water has something to splash against and this will also be our background. Okay, so once we have that, we can change our cube. <coughs> Excuse me. To a domain. Now the way we do that is if we have our cube selected, we can go over here to this, uh, which is our force or our physics. Um, it's this little kind of like ball going around another ball. Uh, click that, and then click fluid, and then under type, make sure it is a domain. Okay, you don't have to uh, change anything for this simulation. Uh, there are some advanced more. Uh, more advanced fluid simulations that you're gonna have to uh, you might have to change some of this stuff with only thing we're gonna worry about is bake but we're not gonna use that right now okay so now once we have our uh, domain set we can add our cube uh, our inflow object which is where the water is going to be coming from so um, I'm gonna put mine right here <coughs> oh, I'm gonna put mine right here right above the domain I'm also going to stretch the domain out the oops this way a little bit more um, yeah maybe like this a little bit more Oops. and so it's kinda like this okay so now uh, select our uh, what are it's going to be our inflow cube and make sure it's selected on fluid on our uh, physics panel and type put inflow now uh, velocity Z is going to be um, where it's going down and I'm gonna put mine at negative 20 Okay, you could always increase this or decrease it depending on how rough or uh, how fast or slow you want your fluid to like fall and run. But I'm going to keep mine on negative 20 because I found that was good for this animation. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to set a render engine to EV just so it's a lot faster in rendering this animation. Um, then I'm going to go down here to this little uh, cube, our object settings, and I'm going to go to visibility. Okay, and I'm going to do uh, deselect show and renders. Uh, this will make it to where this cube doesn't show up in our final render. And then once we have our domain set, what we can do is, if I'm correct, we can go down here and click bake, and then it'll click bake. This could take some time depending on how big your fluid animation is or fluid simulation is. But for this, it shouldn't take a long time, but it might take a few seconds. So I'll be back to you once this is baked. Okay, so now our simulation is baked. That took maybe two to three minutes. I'm not sure. I didn't really count. But it didn't take super long. But if you do have a very heavy fluid simulation or any simulation whatsoever, uh, it could take a little longer to bake. But mine took about two to three minutes. <coughs> so now if we play our animation, we should be able to see that it is working. Now, you might want to increase the um, velocity a little more. But I think I know the issue, and I might have to rebate this animation. So basically, the reason why um, it's going slower right here is because our frames aren't set to 120. And I, I definitely did that to show you guys what not to do, and not because I forgot. But anyways, let's change our frames to 120 because this is a 120 frame animation. But if you did want a longer animation, you could very well do that. But this frame, uh, this animation is going to be 120. So just go ahead and set your frames and to 120. Okay. Now our animation is going to have to be rebaked if you want it to uh, be a little bit faster. If not, then that's all you. But I'm going to go ahead and rebake mine and I'll be back once that is done again. 
All right, so now my animation is rebaked, this time with 120 frames. And if we play it, we should see that it's a lot faster than it's from 250. And it is, okay? So this is uh, the fr uh, the animation uh, without any sort of, um, like, effects applied to it like we're going to do. So the way I got that uh, pixelated effect is by using the remesh modifier. Now, I did go over this in a separate video um, about how to voxelize a mesh, uh, any mesh. I mean, we're going to be using that same uh, tactic, I guess, um, or that same uh, way to make this uh, fluid uh, blocky or whatever. So we just go over to your modifiers tab, add a modifier, and remesh. It's in the generate tab. So uh, click that, and on mode, change it to blocks. And we should see, yep, our um, water goes to block. Now just um, increase the ultra depth until you see how you want it. I'm going to say about 6 or 7-ish. Yes, yeah, 7 maybe. Um, and then once we play, we should see that it is a lot slower, but we do have that um, voxel look, which is what we want. Okay, so now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give this uh, water just a base blue material. So it should already be applied if you're using the base 2.8 or the uh, newest 2.8 version. Uh, but if it's not, just click right here and it'll add a new material. So I'm going to change the base color to this kind of bluish material like that. I'm going to turn the roughness all the way up just so we don't have any light reflections off of it. Or that, I don't know, but just, ch just change it to one. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the background color to, let me actually look and see what I had it with. Okay, so I had it pink first, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to add a new material to it and change the base color to a pinkish like that. Uh, change the roughness all the way up and then delete this default lamp. We're going to set up the lighting really quick. Make sure you're in Eevee. Uh, this is going to send screen place reflections on. Uh, make sure half fresh tra tra trace isn't uh, turned on otherwise your shadows will be weird um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a, th a quick three-point lighting setup by adding an area lamp and then bring it over here toward the left of our camera uh, pointing it toward the sim like that ish <coughs> uh, then go to your lighting tab right here uh, change the power to I'm gonna go 2000 at first I'm not good with EV lighting so this me guessing it first and change the size to five okay uh, change the color to not nah, maybe not maybe we don't need to change the color yet um, shift D on this lamp and bring one behind the camera and then just double tap R that's how I'm doing this by the way um, double tapping R is this rotation thing here um, and just basically double tap R position it like this and then shift D again bring one behind it double tap R till it's like this again okay now we can see if our lighting is correct and it looks like it is and decrease uh, deselect show viewport by the way if you don't want it uh, showing your viewport so now if we look at this we can see that it is correctly doing the thingy thing so that's what we want we want it to do the thingy thing Okay, now I'm going to uh, show how to get that uh, sort of background changing uh, color. So the way we do that is very simple. We're just going to animate the color wheel in this base color. And so make sure you're on frame 1 and then right click this and hit click insert keyframe. Okay, so since this is 120 frames, we can change the color every 30 frames and it'll even now on 120. If you have a longer animation, this might not work exactly. You might have, uh, you might have to uh, tinker with it a little bit. But uh, after one, just jump to frame 30, and then change the base color to a red, kind of like that. And then right click and insert keyframe. Then go to 60, and change it to a yellow, insert keyframe, change, uh, change the frame to 90, change the base color to a green, and then, oops. To a green and then insert keyframe and then change it to 120 and then change it to this kind of light blue material and then insert keyframe now if we look in our animation we should see that our background is changing 
and it looks like it is so just to make sure we can jump to a frame and it is uh, I don't know why but the remesh modifier makes your uh, animation go super slow uh, the frame rate just drops super slow uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lower the camera a little bit just so this is for uh, further to the top and then yeah we can see our backgrounds changing uh, the fluid animation is working um, and then all it's supposed to do is render it so render settings um, the default samples on EV 64 work um, resolution X and Y I keep it 1080 by 1080 just because I uploaded Instagram and stuff uh, if you want you can change it to 1920 by 1080 it's whatever uh, frame rate 24 FPS is good uh, output this is up to you wherever you want it saved on your computer uh, file format uh, FFmpeg video is what we want <coughs> Encoding, uh, make sure it's on MPEG-4 because um, that'll give you an MP4 file. Everything else uh, should be good. And then just go up here to render and render animation or you can use Control f 12 And that's it. That's uh, You're done with the animation. Congratulations. Um, so hopefully you learned uh, something from this tutorial. Um, basically went over just uh, base fluid simulations. Uh, hopefully you learned something. If you did, then leave it in the comments below. I love hearing you guys' feedback. If I did something wrong or if I could have done something better, make sure to leave it in the comments below too. Um, so, thanks guys so much for watching. I'm Michael from Polygon Island. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.